Bleach Thousand Year Blood War, episode 8. Let's get into it. We're going to try and keep this one a little more brief and short and more discussion based, kinda. Not really. <laughs> it's nice to see the medical squad members properly again. Isane, Hanataro, this guy, you know. <laughs> Isane getting emotional is kinda sad and it feels like Unhana is hurt from Yamamoto's death as well. I guess it makes sense as she's known him the longest out of everyone Goite uh, related. Seeing Kyoraku looking into the crater where Yama died is kind of saddening to be honest because we know how much Kyoraku cared about Yama. Kaku for real going crazy like how delusional can you be to think Kenpachi can't lose? I get that he's super strong and all but come on. He's lost before, This ain't, it ain't like it's the first time, you know. The banter between Ichigo and Rukia is always great. Rukia knows something is up with Ichigo, she knows something's bugging him. But at the same time I get the vibe that Shinji also knows that something's up, but was trying to give Ru Rukia hope that nothing was wrong. Then we see all the available captains uh, grieving and... Uh, to all the Soifon fans, I know it was hard to watch Soifon getting yelled at and be scared not once but twice. But anyways, <laughs> it's nice seeing this side of Soifon. It shows what she can be and what she is on the inside. Also, Soifon, come on man, calling out Ken Seishin and Rose to hate the head, head captain with no concrete evidence is just not it. <laughs> like, it just ain't it. <laughs> Again. This is who Soifon truly is, a person who shows a lot of emotions when she isn't acting like the perfect person, which isn't actually puts on most of the times as the captain of the second division. Kuraku being the most mature out of everyone and settling everyone down, I love Kuraku man, it's moments like these that make me love him, like he's always giving off this calm and collected vibe for the most part. He's putting his own emotions aside and thinking of what needs to be done and not what he wants to do. He probably wants to grieve too, or probably wants to be sad, but he knows that that won't help anyone. And he knows that that is not the best thing to do in that situation. The reveal of Ichigo's Bankai not being fixable is different from the manga. The Ikaku, Renji and Komura Bankai details were left out. To the info cards and buff con was completely removed from this episode. The Zero Squad reveal was nicely done. I bet the anime only people were so confused on seeing them. <laughs> like, they were probably wondering what kind of people are these. these are, are these truly the strongest five? The, yeah. I love how Ichibe just ignores Soifon. But Tenjiro's Shumbo or Flash Step sounds different, like, it sounds completely different. Now, some people are saying that Ichigo's uh, thing was actually Sonido, and I'm still not 100% convinced it, I feel like Ichigo's uh, thing could still be Shumpo, it could still be Sonido or Hidden Kaku, it is a possibility. Uh, very unlikely that it will be Hidden Kaku, but there's a chance. Um, but from the, the reason I think I'm not the reason I'm not 100 percent convinced is because from Soifon's reaction you can see that Tenjiro's movement was completely different from just any normal shunpo. So there was definitely either it was like some sort of an altered shunpo or it was not shunpo at all. So until we find that out, I'm not confirming or denying any of these statements. I do kind of hate how Tenjiro just looks down on Unohana in a patronizing manner. Also how some of the squad zero members actually look down on the Gote captains mainly being Tenjiro and a little bit of Senjimaru, but Senjimaru and another peak waifu, so mainly Tenjiro. Uh, <laughs> Kyoraku knows what Tenjiro was trying to tell Unohana. Also Urahara the Gote are just at the right time. I love how Orihime and Chad just butt in man. Like, Urahara is just saying, and Orihime just comes through, then all of a sudden Chad just comes through. <laughs> peak, peak. 
And that's all I can say, peak. Also, the anime made it really obvious that the person uh, in the background was actually Grimjo. Like, in the anime, in the manga, sorry, uh, they at least made it, made it somewhat of a mystery, you know? They also removed Chad saying that Ichigo might run away if he's told to do what he truly wants to do by Udahara, which um, was a great change, to be honest, because it really ruined Chad's character, and a lot of people hated that moment, because it was very out of character for Chad to doubt Ichigo, as he has known Ichigo for quite a long time. Uh, since middle school, actually. So it was weird knowing that Ichigo wants to protect for Chad to say that. It was very uh, out of character, and I assume it was a rude because it was incredibly out of character for Chad to say such a thing. And I assume it was one of those things that w were added to the manga as they just needed to, you know, kind of like filler, you know? They needed to have something there so that. Kubo just added that panel of Chad saying that, so I assume that's why it was removed. I love this shot of Ichigo, man, like, it looks so cool, the details on his hair, it just wants to, it, it just makes me want to draw, <laughs> I, and I can't draw that well, so I, I feel so jealous that I can't draw that, something even remotely as good as that, but yeah. And Kukaku's screen time. More peak waifu, underrated waifu, peak, Kukaku's is amazing, also, Ichibe be chillin, Ichibe for real just be chillin with, on Ichigo, Ichibe is vibin, for real, for real, also great to see the form bringers again, uh, hopefully they get to play a good role in the, in, in the anime, including Ganju, hopefully he doesn't just fight the sand monsters, if you know, you know. Uh, also, one thing that's been cleared up uh, is that Ishin is 100% Kukaku and Ganju, uh, Kukaku and Ganju's uncle. Uh, as some people were still confused uh, from the manga that it was him, because we never saw them interacting, but with this uh, brief moment, we can see that that is Ishin. Uh, sorry, all anime-only people, I just spoiled it, but, yeah. <laughs> the Soul Palace looks nice. The lighting is incredibly well done, as to be expected from Taguchi. He's the one working on uh, the... Uh, he's, he's the director, so <laughs> we should expect lighting stuff. Man loves to work with the lighting. Also, it's somewhat different looking from the manga as in the manga we could see some houses and buildings besides the 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 five platforms and the palace the main palace uh, so that's I guess uh, a nice change for Senjimaru to say Aizen personifies evil and then to say that the Quincy's are far worse is really something big like What's worse than someone that personifies evil itself? Because no matter what bad thing you think of, it'll be under the shadows of evil. Although it signifies how bad and dangerous the Quincy are, it doesn't exactly make sense when you actually think about it, like, wordly, you know, using words, basically. Like, think about it. Evil is like every single bad thing in the world like evil is a thing that signifies the worst of the worst so what's worse than the worst itself i guess that goes to show that the quincy are truly more than just simply evil <laughs> i mean Literally send you Mara's words. <laughs> but yeah. Wetsu's place stands out like a sore thumb because of that huge ocean looking thing. <laughs> also, Nimaya's one kinda. Nimaya? Nimaya's the same guy I just talked about. Also, Tenjiro's one is kinda noticeable as well. The rest, I couldn't really tell. A <laughs> man really just grabbed one of the most badass and cold hearted captains of this Gote 13 and just went, Yeet! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> that guy is on the verge of death! Ending to the episode is very abrupt, but what we're gonna talk about 
is whether we took a dub or an L. Quite a few fan service moments were cut from this episode. Uh, them being from this page and this panel of Rukia's Peach. <laughs> now, we can do two things. Hope and hope that it'll, it'll be in the next episode. Or, two, cry about it. Of course, we're going to cope and hope, because it's still a big possibility. And I believe it would be weird to just cut this stuff without any reason. But Kuro-sensei is involved, and again, uh, this could be one of those filler panels. So, you never know. Kuro-sensei is involved with the production, so he if he might want it to be in a different way. Uh, we took a dub, in general, a small L for the removed fan service, but overall, a big dub. The Soul King, or Rayo, looks... Good. Also, another change is that there's actually no other, no one other than the five Squad Zero members around. We'll probably see some others, like people, the people at Tenjiro's place. But yeah, for the most part, there's no one else. Maybe, maybe we won't even see them. Who knows? We'll find out in the next episode. Uh, this next episode will be done with Tenjiro's place, and we're gonna move on to Hikifune's place. If I'm not wrong, so. We're gonna find out next episode. But yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully you all have enjoyed this uh, video. Let me know what you guys think of the cut fan service and all the whole episode and and the episode as a whole even. Uh, and yeah, that'll be it from me. Hope you all have enjoyed and I'll see you all in a new world. Peace.